which is this one was given to me yesterday this morning and really made me cry. So the first one made me cry, but this one made me cry more. Some very important facts that pastors, ministers, or men of God must know. This after that you can tell me to uh, send to you. That's why when I finish with the notes, I try to put it so that I can send it to my email in case anybody needs a copy. Some very important facts. The ministers, pastors, apostles, men of God must know. We have one to 18. Number one, you must know that God wants his work to grow. God wants his work to grow. You must understand, see under that number one, you must understand that God does not grow the work. God does not grow the work. But he grew the workers. He grew the pastors to make the work grow. And the pastors grew. The work have no alternative but to grow. God does not put interest is how the work will grow. His interest is his interest is how. The man of God who is doing the work can grow. It means your work cannot grow more than, more than your growth. Your branch cannot grow. When I say grow, I'm not talking about just numerically now. I'm not talking about maybe you have thousands. No, please be spirit with me. So the level that goes say, yes, this is the branch I'm well pleased. I'm not talking about activities. Be busy. No. We must understand that God does not grow the work, but grow the workers. Grow the pastors to make the work grow. And people give an understanding in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Number two, they are facts. Two. The growth of the pastor or minister is what begot the growth of the ministry. The growth of the pastor, of the minister, of the watchman is what begot, give birth to the growth of the ministry. Your ministry grow as you are growing. Number three, the growth of the man of God in vision, revelation, in personal consecration to God is what gives birth to the growth of the people on this ministry or in his branch. Your growth in vision, in revelation, in personal consecration to God is what grow your people. The more you are consecrated, the more the people that follow you are consecrated. The more the man of God grow in vision, the people have no choice that to grow along. When this, when the stem is growing. The branches have no choice that will grow. Am I, am, I, am I right? I think so. Let the stem be growing. You see the branches be growing. As we know biblically, the stem cannot produce unless they are attached to the what? To the branch. So, I mean, unless the branches are attached to the stem. 
And when the same have not to offer, the branches will suffer. And it will not yield good fruit. Brethren, number four, there cannot be growth in the pew unless there is corresponding growth in the life of the man or the pulpit. I say it again. Dear man of God, listen, don't expect growth, spiritual growth, moral growth, or application growth in your branch or in this ministry unless there's a corresponding growth in the man of God or the pulpit. It is the pulpit that grows the pew. It's not the pew that grows the pulpit. It's where the pulpit is on fire. The pew will be ignited with the fire. Where the pulpit is lazy, the pew will slip off. Where the pulpit is prayerless, the pew will be crippled. When the pulpit lack the word of God, the, the, the pew, they're in trouble. When the pulpit lack vision, lack revelation, lack consecration to God, <laughs> the pew is in trouble. God does not wash the pew before the pulpit. He watched from the pulpit down to the pew. As I said, the, the oil that flowed from the head of Aaron down to. We know, we, we know about Moses. When God had get hold of Moses, he know everything is settled. Moses, just stay with me for 40 days. I know the people be handled. God was always interested in Moses being with him. As Moses come down to the people, the people will follow. The aroma of God's, of God's presence in the life of Moses, they connect the pupils, I mean the pew. When I say pupil, when I say pew, it means the congregation to him. Number five, the strength of the ministry or the strength of any branch is not located in the branch or in the ministry, but in the minister. Ah, if you see that branch here, oh, wow. Ah, if you see, yeah, if you see that branch, if you see California branch, wow. The strength is not located in the branch itself, it's located in the minister in that branch. It's located in the pastor. It's located in the pulpit in that branch. Senator, please, can you take care of that sister, please? God bless you, man. I say again, the strength of the ministry or branches is not located in the ministry or the branches, but in the minister. In the man of God that is hardly the ministry. Number six, anytime God wants to send revival to the church or people, he does not look for the people that he wants to send the revival to. He looks for the man, the man of God, the pastor, by which he will send the revival through. God does not look for people they want to revive. He looks for the revivalist. While the revivalist is set to God, revival is sure. God does not only prepare the people who meet, he prepares the revivalist. That was why it took so long that Moses was in Egypt, the people would suffer. But from the day God grabbed Moses, prepared Moses, then God said, okay, I have come to deliver Israel. 
When Moses was not there, God did not come. Somebody hearing me? When Moses was not ready, God did not say, now I have come. It was when he found Moses. He now said, I have come to deliver my people. He was not looking for the Israel to deliver. He was looking for the man of God that he will use to deliver them. So therefore, in your branch, in this ministry, God is more, God is more interested in you that he will use to deliver his people at the flocks. I'm not saying, I'm not saying it's not interested in the flocks, but when you are sound, when you are right with God, with God I tell you the truth, the Lord will work effortless with the members. I tell you, when the Lord was hammering me with all this yesterday night, from that 11 plus to around four or five just now, I tell you the truth, I could not, I could not. Then I know everything was about me. If the church have not grown before now, if anything, it has been me, it has been you. It has never been that people were living. I cried. I wept. Number seven. If God successfully prevailed over me and all the pastors in MSLPM, he has prevailed over the congregation. If you have been able to break me and you, make me and you humble, make me and you holy, make me and you right with him, you have prevailed over the people. This made me cry. This made me cry, people of God. If God prevail over me, if God has succeeded in winning me, everybody in this nation will, will make heaven. Look for how to prevail over that my character, over your character. And through the aroma of my new lifestyle, there's one thing God does about a leader. It is natural. You, even though you speak or not, everything about you command your, your people you are leading. If you just come now as a leader, I say now, okay. Let me, let me start wearing jeans with, with one leg. It will only take time. If you don't follow that, they will follow later. So you hearing me? If you don't follow immediately, so follow immediately, but later, later, you will see they, they begin to adapt to your system. That's why it is very, very important to God to prevail over the pastor and his church. Be settled. That's why he told Peter, uh, told Peter is that John chapter 20 or thereabout? Uh, Peter, Peter, love very damn me more than this. Feed my flocks. If Peter loved Christ more than food, the, the members will follow suit. Check church that are saying financial, financial, financial. Check the pastor. Financial, financial, financial. Church churches, all they talk about is vision, dream, dream. That is who they, their pastor is. Check churches who fear God, who talk about holiness, you will not check the man on the pulpit. It's a natural phenomenon. God help us in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. By it, fire does not burn from the congregation to the pulpit but from the pulpit to the congregation. If the pastor lack oil, don't expect oil to flow. God will not, God will not do it. He has never done it. It will not start from me and you. It will be a breach of contract. It has always been right from time, from the man of God to the people. The God always flow from them, to the men of God, to the pulpit. 
in everything. That's why we should understand that the people we are leading, they are under our mercy. That's why God wants us, we must be careful the way we handle his flocks. Because he knows everything about us. It's what they, they follow. They may say, hey, I, don't, hey, I am not following the man of God. They will not know what they will follow. Somebody hearing me? Hey, I am not doing what the man of God is doing. If you look very closely, you are doing it or not to you. Am I making sense here? I think so. It's a natural thing. It's a reflex action. You don't know it's not behaving like a, like a pastor. <laughs> That's why a pastor must be well behaved. Number nine. God has no problem in releasing money or power to the church, but has problem with men of God, he will commit money and power into their hands that will not betray him. This one make me cry again. Say, I'm, I'm not, I can unleash money to the ministry. You start building mushrooms. I can release power. Then you go to the, to the mortuary. You go to all the dead will come out. But I'm afraid if you will not betray me. God have no problem in how to release money to the, to the branch. It's not, it doesn't have problem how to unleash power and wait to the branch. How to make sure vision and revelation is coming. We have problem with you, with me. If that will not make me, you turn, turn against him. If when money comes, we'll not be busy over the contract, over a project, and forget the flux. You see, many big churches now, they call themselves, they are forgotten the, the, the lay down, the reason why they were called. You're not talking about how to have the, the second jet, the third jet, the whatever. I'm not saying it's wrong to buy whatever they're buying, but many of them, their focus is not on their betray. Christ now. They don't care about their flocks anymore. So God has a problem with me and you. If, if he do what he wants to do, if you and I will not destroy ourselves, will not sell ourselves to hell. You know any pastor that said he said to hell, I betray God. You have betrayed, you have betrayed the Lord for you not to go back to him. After all, he says, petition your life. You have betrayed him. That's why it's watchful to make sure he don't give out or to kill you. Number 10. If the pew, our congregation must be strong, get this clear, fervent, and tough against sin. The pulpit Man of God must be strong and tough enough to produce the strength of the fire that will make them strong. I come again. If the pew, which is the congregation, must be strong, fervent, and tough minded against sin, the pulpit. The man of in the, of the pulpit, which is the man of God, must be strong and tough enough to produce the strength of fire that will make the post strong. When a man of God stands against him, he will stand against it. But a man of God just look at it and, and just it's a normal thing. You see all the members we say, it's a normal thing to. Have you ever asked yourself in the Bible, those days, where is that any king that reign, if they can just say, okay, it's idol now, all of them will be idol. When David say, okay, I will fear God, you see everyone say, yes, we will fear God. Why? Because God has given you that power, that glory. 
So therefore, if the people of this ministry will be fervent, will be able to stand against the wise of the wicked, in this end time, you and I must be strong enough to make, to make them strong. The pulpit can hardly, it is impossible for the pew to be stronger than the pulpit. Except the, the, the pulpit is, is, is uh, it just, it's a, it's a rule that people pulpit. When I say pulpit, I mean the man of the pulpit. If now we're in a very tough time now, if I and you are not tough, I tell you, our people are in trouble. I watched a video two weeks ago. The man of God was saying, I don't know what is in the vaccine. I cannot take it. I will not take it. The man back me shouting, yeah! If you see comments, this is a real man of God. Yes, man of God is true, yeah! After a week, what did I pass? I saw the same man of God. Say, I want to travel. It doesn't matter what is in it. I'll just dust away. The same members were shouting again. Yeah, I said, hey, what is this? The same member, does he shout it? Yeah, yeah, you are right. He was right when he said he would not take it. He's right again and we say we'll take it now. This is the power of a leader. It's only a comment. People were saying, hey, you have, you have missed it. Yeah, what is this? So therefore, if our people must be able to overcome what is coming now, you and I must prepare to overcome. Number uh, okay, number eleven. Yeah. Number eleven. The standard that any congregation can attain is never higher than the height or might of the pastor or minister on the pulpit. The standard that any congregation can attain is never higher than the height or might of the pastor or the minister on the pulpit. It will be very difficult, except it is God himself that connects some of the congregation to another shepherd. So though they are there with you, but they are a sheep for another pastor. They are your congregation. They will just be there, but they are practicing what they are doing in other church. You see, it's supposed to say, eh, eh, to, to plant it doesn't matter. Or to make it doesn't matter. You see some people there, they are not making up. Why? The Lord in his mercy have connected them to another shepherd, though they are there. So the one that are the shepherd, the, the, the congregation there, they cannot go above the standard you set for them. If when this ministry started, I was preaching Yopi Yopi. Pastor Fenner would just come and join Yopi. I think that is true. It's true. Pastor Edgy would have come now and said, Pastor, preach tomorrow. He will, preach, he will be looking for, 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 for a topic connected to financial dichotomy. If it's all about finances, that is how they will follow. If the day you preach holiness, you will see members, they'll be grumbling. But I tell you now, if any pastor bring a topic now saying how to make money, you'll say, you'll say, uh, you'll say hmm, what is this? This is not what, this is not what they know. I, my sisters, I think so. The topic alone, the topic alone, if you just come now, and just okay, um, prophetic Money of the whatever has a possibility to hear this. 
And if it's me, hey, the man I'm gonna fall in. No, he's not talking about money. No, oh, oh. you will see some people going to prayer. No, 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 no. Why? Because the standard that you have placed on ground. Praise Master Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All these are scary. They are scary. They are scary. Now, number 12. Unless the man of God set a godly and productive priority for his own, for his own life and grow his own life, he cannot adequately grow nor prosper the work the Lord has given him. This one make me start thinking again, praying. I come again. Unless the man of God set a godly and productive priority for his own life and grow his own life, he cannot adequately grow nor prosper the work of God, prosper the ministry. You must set priority for yourself. Set goal for yourself. Grow in it. And that growth will grow the ministry. That your priority will prosper the ministry. Say, God, help us. About the thing. The man of God do not need to pursue nor stretch himself to gain the crowd. The man of God do not need to start pursuing, stressing. I remember one of us here, like, like Pastor Tony, he said, sir, one day I, I sat down. I said, this is busy, busy activity. I said, this, this is not what God needs. Sir, I hope I'm correct, Pastor Tony. He said, I, I, look at, I look at the church. He said, the church is busy. The church is for fatigue. He said, no, he said, mm -mm. this is not what God is looking for. I have to sit down and reevaluate to see what we can do. I said, that is the spirit. Priority. Not just be randomly shooting. Uh, hey, people, people are just seeing us. We are always having activities. And that church, they are, they are so, they are always, uh, they are always doing it. Oh, it's like a routine. Just doing it. God is looking for a priority based activity. And it must come from your own set priority. When you have grown it, it will grow. The ministry, I pray God give us understanding in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, as I said before, verse uh, 13, the man of God does not need to pursue or stress himself to get the crowd or congregation. All he needs is to get crowded with the presence of God. The man of God does not need to stress himself Run up and down, be jumping up and down like a frog to get the crowd. All you and I need is to be crowded with the presence of God. The arrow man will gather the crowd for you. The crowded presence of God around you will gather the crowd for you. It's only what only one program you do. That program will settle everything. That's why it's very, very important to settle things in the altar of prayer. Even our Lord Jesus Christ, when it was uh, uh, about money, the Lord separated himself to prayer. And once he come out, you see manifestation. Sometimes we wear ourselves out to make this work. No. When it is said to in the art of prayer, just on, just lead to effort. The aroma of God's presence in you, the glory of God upon your life, will manifest. And you see the crowd. 
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The man of the, the man of God must understand that unless God said to, or the men of God now must understand that unless God said to us and said to in us. We cannot give a satisfactory or quality service to the congregation or the people. I come again. The apostle, the pastor, the resident pastor, the, all the pastors, we must understand that unless God said to us and said to in us, these two things. Settle you and settle in you. We cannot give a, a satisfactory or, or quality service to the congregation or the people. I'm not saying we will not preach to them, all, but it's not yield anything. If God has not settled me and settled in you, we'll preach message. Just you may just say, hey, let us pray. It will not go anywhere. But when God said to me and you, the message we we'll use when I want to preach, we'll preach for 10 minutes. Enough. They'll go back home, everything to work. But if God has not said to me and you, we can preach and shout and shout and shout, routine shout. I'll shout out to them. Uh, they don't come tomorrow, come and shout it on. Everybody goes, out, come and shout. Nothing will, nothing will happen. But when God said to me and you, and settle in you and I. Hey, I tell you the truth. It's only once a week we preach. Things will be moving, will be fine. Then I begin to say, Lord, it has always been me, not the people. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Number 15. When the pastor or the man of God allows God to walk on and in him, he will work effortless in the life of the people that is leading. When a man of God allows, God will not force you on an aisle. There's no way God, it was written, and God forced Moses and dragged Moses to the mountain. Do you read it, do you read it, do you read it so? No. If you decide to eat 336 days all the, of the year, God will not worry. Just be eating. Just be doing. If you decide it's okay, uh, all that we do now is to be traveling up and down. Just be asking, hey, hey sister, so I the church. Hey, no problem. Continue. Continue. Go on, force you. By the end, we'll tell you that is not the path that the apostles follow. That was the own path. When the man, of, when, when the pastor or the man of God allow God to walk. On and in him, he will work effortless, effortlessly in the lives of the people. Number 16. The pastor or men of God must do ourselves good or do ourselves favor to cry to the Holy Spirit. What is that cry? To teach us exactly what Jesus Christ taught his disciples when he was on earth. What is that? Can you tell me what is that? Okay. Are we sleeping? No, sir. Say it again, sir. I come again. The pastor or the men of God must do ourselves good or favor to cry to the Holy Spirit to teach us what our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ taught his disciples when he was on earth. What was that? What did he say? They cried and said, teach us how to do it, to, how to pray. Pray with us, How to pray with us, Teach us how to pray. Teach us how to pray. Teach us how to pray. 
a prayerful man of God. He's a powerful man of God. You cannot perform more than a prayer life. Oh. We cannot go. You can be anointed naturally, but if you are not prayerful, you will destroy yourself. You'll be going down and down and down. You will not, you will not understand. Before you just come and talk, now you come now and make noise and make noise. Maybe just drop, drop two, two things. It is not supposed to be so. But when you cry to the Holy Spirit, teach me to pray. I want to be a prayerful man of God. And when I come, I, I preach as a prayerful man of God, I tell you, everything you do as a prayerful man of God must always yield fruit. And it will be effortless. No stress. No stress. A prayerful man of God is not afraid to face anything. He's not afraid to do anything. You know why? Because he always settle everything on his knee. Before he come out. And I came to understand that the, the apostles, they were always watching Jesus Christ. He don't do anything without faith for praying. They were watching pray, pray. When they, when they break, they see, they, ah, no, 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 this is the secret. Teach us how to do this too. So, men of God, as we'll be going back now, so our branches, we must cry and say, God, make me a prayerful man of God. Our eyes cannot be open more than our prayer life. If God does it, that means he's, uh, he's I have to say it now, he's not a justified, he's not a holy God again. He can't give to you more than how you, how you ask. Say, ask, it shall be given. Ask, it shall be given. Do you want your branch to be an epitome? Do you want where God has placed you to be a peaceter? You must be a prayerful man of God. Do you want God to settle in your branch? And for a branch, it will be just stretching out to the others. You must be. God must always see you out of there. Maybe you go to God, take you to, to a program. After the program, yeah, oh, you are doing you see that so that people, if it was Christ, people say, and the Lord send the people away. He will send his own apostle away, and himself will go and pray. We must also learn that. We must also learn that. Number 17, the man of God must understand that his growth or the growth of the ministry does not happen by chance, but by choice. It does not happen by chance, but by choice. Have you made the choice that I will be going for evangelism? I will not only say, uh, the Lord sent the people two by two where he said will also go. Some of this is make me Christ today. They have come to the level that as a watchman now, I will only send people where Christ was sending people to where he said will also go evangelize. So it's not by choice. So it's not by chance. You will never have the chance. If you think let me say this. I think I'm talking to the wise people. If you think that the ministry will give you a chance to go and pray, you will waste your time. The work of God, this one was told to me yesterday night. I mean, this morning. The work of God will never give you time to go and pray. It will never give you time to go and pray. The ministry will never allow you to go and pray. There's always work to do. Somebody wants you to talk to him or her. Your phone wants to ring. It's not your choice to say, what God cannot, what God will not, will not do, it. I cannot do it. So phone the offer. I will, I want to pray. 
let me take away phone. Ministry, if I don't grow, you cannot grow. Please let me be first. Let me grow so that I can grow you. If I don't pray, I will perish you. So ministry, please. That's why after now, I'm praying to ask God, God, what and what do you want me to do? Because <laughs> it's, not, it's not a joke. I have to grow. You have to grow. As I said before, situation in the ministry, this around you, we never ever allow to do the things of God. We never allow to be in God's presence. We know the story of Mary, Mary and Martha. The Bible says, Martha welcomed Christ in her own house. But the activity there did not allow him, not allow her to sit with him. But Mary made the choice to say, all these activities, there is time for everything. I will not allow you. I have to sit with Christ. As some of us, we do. And Martha came. I said, Jesus, don't you care? You have the, the, the bonus. Don't you care that my sister is not serving with me? And I just told her, Martha, Look, sis, look, so matter, matter. You are combat about with so many things. It's not just all about food, though. Too much activity will weigh the man of God down. When they say, "Okay, let us come for prayer for the for the nation," you are not there. Pray for the nation, you are not there. Pray for children, children you are not there. But the one that you will be busy activity, you'll be there. You have missed it. All oh, this one we think they are not important is where the Lord always wants us to be. Not, not forsaking the rest. That's why we must evaluate and reevaluate what we are doing. Jesus said, matter, matter. You are combat about smithing, but your sister have chosen the right thing which cannot be taken from her. Meaning, my presence in her life cannot be taken away. You have choose to stay with me. So, man of God, we must choose to stay with Christ. We must choose, we must choose to always be at the feet of Christ. That's where the information comes from. That's why, that's where what you have for the people come from. If Moses had not gone to stay with Christ, for, with God, for 40 days, I tell you, the Ten Commandments, you will not see it. Everything we are re reading now, from, from, from uh, uh, Romans to uh, uh, Revelation, what that is, uh, Jude, Apostle Paul got them through Revelation, and through Revelation came to city at the feet of Christ. Go help us in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Um, the last one. We must understand, by 18, we must understand that pulpit is not a place of pleasantries. A pulpit is too precious to waste time on or in. Every single time wasted on the pulpit is a time it's a, a, sorry, I say it again. We must understand that a pulpit is not a place of pleasantry. For example, maybe I'll come to the pulpit now. See, see, see me at the word of God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, Sister Jennifer, God bless you, Sister Jennifer. I remember her as for your daddy on the street. You are, you are a wonderful sister. You are a wonderful sister. Hey, hey Sister Patricia, how are you doing? Mm. Hey, you, can you remember that day when you came to my house and uh, my wife cooked rice and uh, you are a wonderful sister. God bless you for the, for the clothes you bought, you bought for me that day. Pulpit is not where they say those things. I learned this day. If I must tell somebody, God, uh, thank you for what you do, so I should say it outside. They're not on the pulpit. It's not a place of pleasantries. 
the place where the word of God is preached. As I come again, we must understand that the pulpit is not a place of pleasantries. The pulpit is too precious to waste time in. Every single time wasted on the pulpit is at the expense of a soul. Every minute on the pulpit can't for a soul somewhere. It's at the expense of a soul and at the detriment of the church. Nigeria brethren, are you hearing me? Yes, sir. Okay, good. Yes, sir. Every time we, any time we spend on the pulpit making noise, talking things we are not supposed to say, is at the expense of a soul and it's at the detriment of the church. The angel will know, the angel have no time for pleasantries. When once a pastor step on the pulpit, the angels are on attention. Immediately you start looking for how, how, how well you, you were dressed or how the make the angel don't work when you are there alone. They follow you there to go and preach the word. Preach the word. Say what the Lord has sent you there. If there's any other thing, say it outside the pulpit. So I understand it's dangerous to bring the Bible to the pulpit, to come and preach, and start saying other things, start doing other things. It's detrimental to the church, to yourself, and to the souls that the Lord wants us to bring to him. And I pray by the mercy of God, these words we, we sink into our spiritual medulla obligata. Pray towards them. Make two of them to know what God has for me and you. Now, if I can ask myself a question now, and ask you a question. Don't ask outside openly, just ask it within yourself. What have been the problem in your branch? If your branch have grown to that level, what was the issue? What, who, was, who was the brain behind it? It's you. Every issue that has been going on in the branch, it's you. It's all about you. It's all about me. When the Lord was talking to me, he never mentioned the, the pulpit, I mean the pew. Everything was about me and the pastors. They're the focal point. If your branch becomes a branch of liars, it's you. If it's not because branch where they fight each other, it's you. And if you become a holy branch, it's, it's all about you. <laughs> Nothing about the people, says the Lord God Almighty. Except you can argue it with him. And that will not be my present. Maybe after now, go and argue with him in your, your, your whole closet. Because I believe everything he said, they are facts. It has always been all about me. The sheep have no problem. When the shepherd had no problem, it is strike the shepherd, the sheep is catch up. Let the shepherd be healthy, the sheep will be healthy. Let the shepherd be fervent, be strong, the sheep will be strong. And I pray, God will help me, I help you to go back home and do the right thing in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Before I go to the last one, I will just quickly brush through it. Hey. Um, this one, just um, a few things. Um, any question so far? <laughs>